So, how did the first day go? It was great. Uh, it was a four-hour class. Um, it's a Saturday, so everybody came in on a Saturday. So I'm currently working in Toronto. So I flew in for this. Oh, it's a Sunday, actually. Sunday, sorry. <laughs> I was teaching in LA yesterday. Um, uh, it was great. Uh, we read the script. Um, we realized that we needed to do a big rewrite, so the students will be doing the rewrite which is great, um, and um, split up into the groups. We'll, we're going to direct a feature film, but there'll be eight different groups doing it, and each directing a different section. Um, so we made the groups and um, just looked at some films for inspiration. Where did the inspiration come from to make this course? I teach at... Um, several uh, graduate film schools. I teach at um, UCLA and USC, and I teach uh, at CalArts. And then I also have my own um, acting and film school called Studio Four. And I've been doing that for, this is my sixth year, teaching graduate film, and I love it. Um, but, what is my inspiration? I guess, I, I guess I figured, you know what I think it is? When I was younger, when I was here at Poly, and then when I went to UCLA, there were all these programs, like filmmaking programs or creative writing programs that I really wanted to be in when I was 16, 17, 18, 19. And I, but they all required you know, um, some sort of audition or application process and, or they just weren't available. You know, when I was, when I was at Powell, we had nothing like this. And, um, and so I always felt, like, at that age, I always felt like, oh man, I'm on the outside. Like there's all this stuff I wanna do and I just don't have access to it. And so now that I've been making movies for almost 20 years and um, I, I want to give opportunities to other people and, and give the opportunities that I would have wanted, you know, when I, when I was that age. How do you think this course will impact the way celebrities interact with their hometown? Hopefully, I mean, hopefully it'll be uh, inspiring. Um, I love Palo Alto. Um, when I was here, I did have a little bit of a rough time and I wanted to get out. A lot of my fellow students went to Stanford, like a lot of people went to Stanford, and I didn't even apply. I like wanted to leave Palo Alto. And then when I got out in the real big world, um, I realized how great it is here, and um, I met Palo Alto has actually inspired me a lot. So I love coming back to my hometown. I know a lot of people don't come, like going back to their own hometown. Um, but I mean, hopefully it's a good thing. Like, for me, it's, it's great for me because I have, you know, you, if you're in the film industry or if you're in a very, if you're in a highly competitive industry or an industry that's hard to break into, like the film industry, what happens is you end up spending a lot of time on yourself, right? Because you have to. You have to um, kind of raise yourself to a certain level or else you don't even have a chance. But after a while, what happens is if you do make it or you do have a career in film or whatever, you get to a point where it's like, wow, all I do is like worry about myself and worry about my career. And I got to a point where I'd done enough, you know, I'd made enough movies that I was proud of that it was sort of like, wow, I don't... I just don't want that attitude anymore where it's like, okay, I did this thing, but what's next? You know, and just always be worrying about, you know, how do I, how do I top what I did? And by teaching in, you know, universities and here, 
it's great for me because it just gets my mind off of myself and kind of takes me out of that um, sort of self-centered, careerist kind of attitude. So you brought up how you teach courses like this at the college level and the grad level. Um, what do you think the main difference is going to be teaching college students versus high school students? Yeah. Um, well, if you're in, you know, if you're in the UCLA or USC graduate film program, you've had to kind of go through a series of checkpoints, and you've had to sort of prove your ability, you know. And so, and then by the time they get to my class, so I'm like probably like a third year class. So they've already had two years of graduate school when they get to my class. So they're, those students are pretty technically savvy. They've made stuff on a, at a certain level, not, you know, usually not features yet or huge movies, but they've made things and, and um, learned how to kind of do it at a proficient level. Um, and so I can work on them, with them on I can really focus on the creative aspects, and I don't have to worry about a lot of the technical aspects. Here, we, we had a lot of applicants. We had, I think, over 500 applicants. We have 40 students, so we picked, Waj wanted to pick, you know, experienced people. So that most of the people in there have made something. Um, but I expect, you know, part of the class will involve you know, learning some of the technical side of things a, a bit more than I, I teach with my graduate students because they already know. Yeah. But that's fine. I, you know, I understand that and I'm sort of making that part of the class. And I'm also, I mean, one of the th great, one of the things I try to do as a teacher, two things, is I always make my classes project-based. So we always make a movie. So my graduate films and here. So... They're basically doing the same thing. They're making a feature film, just like I do in my graduate classes. But I try to bring, I bring in the material, the source material. And I try to bring in material that the class can handle. So with the graduate students, um, you know, sometimes I'll give them um, things that involve a bit more action than this or that kind of thing. But it's always action that, is affordable for you know film students and, and is manageable. And here, you know, I've brought in my mother's novel, Metamorphosis, which is about teens in high school. And it's actually was inspired, the book was inspired by Pally. So I feel like it's material that these students are very equipped to engage with and handle. Yeah. When this course was brought to the attention of Pally students, why was it initially announced without your name? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, the application went out and it just said like famous actor, director. And it wasn't Did announced. people guess? I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's Paul also, so it's like implied, but I'm, your, it, your name wasn't officially brought onto it until you posted on Instagram. I see. Um, I honestly don't know. It, it's not the way I would have done it. Um, Let's just say that, uh, you know, I, I, I've worked with a lot of schools in addition to, you know, the ones I teach at now, and um, I think it's always, you know, whenever you bring something new, a new kind of thing to a school, it's, you know, it can be scary because nobody knows what it's going to be like, and um, they could think I'm going to, I don't know, I don't know, corrupt the students, I don't, I don't know. But anytime there's change, I think it's just a little scary just because it's new for everybody but in the past with every school I've I've gone to with a program like this they've they've loved it from you know undergraduate to graduate and I think now we can after today we can say high school they 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 like it so going off of that why did you choose to publicize this course through Instagram because nobody was signing up when it was a mysterious <laughs> celebrity so I wanted some students and if I was going to, you know, I'm pretty busy. Like, I teach at four schools in addition to this one. And I am making a miniseries in Toronto right now. So I'm really busy. So if I'm going to commit to flying out here, I want there to be students. 
And um, fortunately, I have you know a fair amount of followers on Instagram and news outlets. You know, pick up things that I post, and I knew that if I put it out there, that you know we get some attention. Um, so, how is your family going to be involved with this course? Um, my mother Betsy and my brother Tom are both helping me with this with class. Is in addition to um, my producing partner Iris Torres, and um, then some some local filmmakers are helping as well. And um, my mother is a writer. She's been a writer her whole life, and started with children's book and now writes young adult novels. So she'll, I think, really be guiding the writers. And she also has classes at um, the um, children's theater um, for actors. And so she's worked with young actors as well, too. So she'll help with, I think, the writing and the acting. And then my brother is just an artist. And um, uh, so, but also has done a fair amount of teaching and stuff like that. So he'll, he'll just be an overall kind of guide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking about the script, can you relate to the script in a personal matter? Um, you know, it's funny. I... I'm obviously my mother's son, and she, it's about a boy named Ovid. Um, I can see things in that character that maybe she, you know, took from me, or she was inspired by things that I did. He's not exactly me, but, and maybe I'm completely wrong, but my guess is she, she has three sons, so my guess is she kind of combined aspects of all of us and put it into the, that character. Um, um, she, she and I, and then I also wrote a book about teenagers called Palo Alto. And my mother and I, we always seem to, we don't plan it, we always seem to like write about the same thing. So like when the, her book was coming out, mine was coming out at the same time, and I was sort of like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Um, but even if I don't see, you know, even if I don't think Ovid is exactly like me, I certainly understand the book because I understand the place that it was inspired by and, and what she sort of took from me and my brothers. I think that's all the questions we have. Okay. So yeah, thank right, you yeah. so much for your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.